Hi. Hi, Hi. everyone. Um, this is episode six of The Well. Today, I'm joined by my husband. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. His name is Mark Weber. Hi. Um, and we have been married for how many years? I don't know. What? How do you not know that? You know that I'm terrible with like time. I'm so present. 14, 15, um, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Oh, yeah, we should know this. Eight years. Eight years. Or almost eight years. It'll be eight years at the end of the year. Um, we, Mark's really excited about this coffee cup, by the way. Um, he wanted to make coffee so he could drink during the interview. Um, is there any significance to that? Or you just thought it was a cool thing to do? It's just like a grounding thing for me. Okay, cool. Um, we are talking about relationships communication um how to have soulmate experiences together and all the ways in which you can just have the most nourishing enriching beautiful connection with your partner and we've been on quite the journey mark and i we haven't we're in a really lovely beautiful place at the moment um but it takes a lot of work and that's the thing about relationships is if you don't look at them as a garden that needs to be tended to and nourished, uh, relationships can fall apart, including your relationship with yourself. So we just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things we've experienced in our relationship, some of the things we've learnt, and uh, do you want to jump in with anything in particular? Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for refilming this. We filmed this the other day, and I was nervous and so i asked to do this again and i feel and well, i was like i roll but <laughs> I know. and now you're a little bit irritated with me right now i'm just like it's really we've had to do this like five times we've been interrupted and i think the original was fine but i was talking a lot he was a little bit more quiet he does have a lot to say about this topic and I do. he's very insightful so he said can't we just do it again and I'm gonna Well that's because I, I thought about the main thing that I wanted to say that I think is the most helpful thing in our relationship. Mm -hmm. Um which is I used to think of dependency as really bad, like being codependent. Codependency. I think we hear that a lot uh in relationships, like don't be codependent or I'm codependent. Um and it took me a while to realize, and also through some work with um, Stan Tatkin, mm -hmm. who is a couples uh, therapist. Um, we love him. That we love, um, that we, we saw in Los Angeles, to realize that, oh wait, there's, there's a difference between codependency and actually being and needing to be dependent on someone else. He talks about being available to be an emotional regulator for the other person which i think you're right we've heard before like oh everyone should take care of their own emotional needs but when you're in partnership actually if he is needing me to help regulate him that's okay that's a part of my role as his partner and vice versa and as long as you guys have that agreement because i think we're so used to and accustomed to learning as we get older like you can only change yourself. You're responsible for yourself. You're responsible for your own emotions. Um, if you want to change the situation, change the way that you're thinking, change your perspective. And it's true. Like we can only really be responsible uh, for ourselves. But I think the benefit of being in a relationship is, is you can create your set of needs within the relationship and build a team. Mm -hmm. And that's my favorite thing that we have is that I feel like you really understand me. I really understand you. I understand what your needs are. Um, and it gives me joy to try to fulfill those needs. And it feels extra kind of liberating and freeing and inspiring knowing that you have my back and you know what my needs are. Yeah, um, and the language we were given with that, um, Stan Tatkin gave us specific language, was uh, having each other's user manual, mm -hmm. which we both really love. I know how he works. 
I know if he's triggered or having a particularly challenging time, all the ways in which he needs me to show up for him. And instead of being resentful um, or taking it personally, because I think it's very easy in relationships to personalize another person's behavior, you take it on yourself. Um, but actually taking a look at him and knowing, oh my gosh, he just wants to feel comforted right now. He wants to feel that he's so safe to have all these big feelings. And we talk about this with our kids too. Um, and that I'm going to be the safe place for him to land. Like that's, that's what he's craving. And because I have his use manual, I know that. So I let go of any of my own irritation surrounding his moods or whatever he's navigating. And so like, I'm here. I love you. I'm not leaving. I'm with you. Like, how, how can I help you? How can I be of service in this moment? It's great because sometimes, you know, no matter how hard you try to pull yourself out of something, it can be really difficult. And so it's cool to have a partner and a teammate who knows how to be helpful in those situations when you're feeling triggered or you're feeling upset about a particular thing, knowing, you know what, I should go do this because this is what would help her the most right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great because sometimes it, it creates, it makes space and room for irrational behavior or, um, you know, moments where you just need a little extra push and some help. That's the benefit of being in a relationship, you know, and I, and it's, and I think that we don't take advantage of that is the other thing yeah. too. I think what's important is, is that, you know, um, I don't solely rely on you to emotionally regulate myself um you know because it is true you're responsible for your own stuff but it does feel great to know that um, i'm available yeah should you need yes yeah and, and likewise and i think that um you know brings up another key point when i think about what what is a healthy relationship and for me it's I've been in unhealthy relationships in the past and this is my, my first, when I really reflect back, my first really, really healthy, deep, connected, soul level relationship. And one of the key elements is uh, it's all about communication. And Mark uses this word all the time, um, or this little phrase, is that vulnerable, deep connected communication is true intimacy and I really believe that that's something that uh, we talk about a lot because you know you always want to show your best version of yourself and there's there are all those private moments where you're feeling vulnerable or you're reactionary or you're in a feeling state and you actually don't even feel like sharing that with other people but when you're trying to be in partnership with someone you live together, maybe you have children together, um, there's a greater need to be able to be very, very revealing with what you're going through. And I find that I can crack open and share everything with him. All the ugliness, all the things that make me feel ashamed or that I'm guilty about and any self-doubts anything i feel like i can land with him and say oh my goodness this is what is coming up for me right now um this is the reason why i've been reacting in a certain way or my behaviors shifted and i just want to be straight up and say like i'm feeling insecure or i'm feeling this way and it's so beautiful the way he accepts it holds it um hears and listens and doesn't always necessarily try and fix the issue, which I am definitely guilty of trying to be a fixer. I always, oh, he's got an issue, I'm gonna fix it. So that's something that, you know, when I'm leaning into the gentler, softer parts of myself, it's just about holding the space to hear, oh wow, that sounds really hard. That sounds really hard what you're going through and I'm here for you. And like, how can I be of service? So that communication, that deep level communication is integral. Yeah, it is. I mean, and we hear that a lot, you know, and, and I think it's easier said than done. And I think that 
but it is vital. Um, and, and then also to knowing, you know, knowing that you can talk too much sometimes. Sometimes we just don't need to talk. We just need action, like sex. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, like that's another important thing. I think sometimes too, for that's married true. couples, they're in a really bad mood. You sometimes. realize, oh, wait, it's been I need. <laughs> how long since we've made love, you know? Um, and so sometimes, you know, it's it's just also important to know that, yes, communication is vital, but sometimes in a relationship we can talk too much. And it's affection too. Yeah, physical affection and making time for each other, carving mm -hmm. out time for each other is vital. Um, and that's hard because we all feel really time poor. I know we've got four kids, about to have five kids between us. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't even have time left for myself, let alone feel like I have time to be there for Mark and, you know, get into deep conversations with him at the end of the night. But I crave that and we need that as a couple. So even if it takes scheduling it in, finding quality time to check in with one another and say, how are you going? What is up? The, the, it's so easy to just slip into that daily grind where you just sort of ships passing in the night and you're just in the trenches with the kids, with work, with whatever it is you've got going on to not actually stop and marinate in the experience of like, hey, what's coming up for you? Mm -hmm. and, and what's happening in your world? Let's just look at each other in the eyes. Eye contact, so important. Mm -hmm. um, and to not have the distractions of work or kids or whatever around you, just like be together. That for us is when I love that Mark says this, he says it all the time, leveling up. He talks about leveling up. And I love that phrase. I'm like, we are leveling up right now. And even arguments and disagreements are opportunities to become closer and to have growth and taking your words and to level up in your relationship. So I never, I, I try not to look at moments where we're arguing as necessarily a negative thing, whilst it feels irritating in the moment and I get irrational and I think, oh, I'm done with this. Um, I always know that they are opportunities to become closer to each other. Yeah, that just made me think of, I, I feel like, and this is, a married couple with soon to be five children eight years in right um i what you're just saying made me think about when we were younger and earlier on in the relationship i think we got a lot of the young passionate fighting out of the relationship mm -hmm. and now i think when fights happen they come from the daily grind of our life or taking each other for granted um, and fighting now. Yeah. It's like irritating. It's almost like, Oh God, this is just a waste of our time. We totally. don't need to be doing this right now. And we, I know in the back of both of our heads, we're quickly trying to figure out a way to stop arguing mm -hmm. and to resolve the situation as quickly and efficiently as possible. And that's awesome. And that's another beautiful benefit of being in a relationship because also I, I think for anyone out there who struggles with like commitment or the idea of like long-term monogamy or just commitment, right? In general, um, one of the beautiful things about being in a long-term committed relationship is that, you know, when you take the idea of, never leaving kind of off the table mm -hmm. um it yeah. ends up making you feel more free within the relationship mm -hmm. it ends up i've never Don't dangle the divorce carrot like yeah well, i'm gonna and, leave you <laughs> yeah you know it's like when you love each other so much and you're so committed to one another and you have a big family like we do um it would certainly take a lot of something really terrible to come in and disrupt our bond mm -hmm. um our family union and that's amazing that's such an amazing feeling yeah so it's a, very liberating it is you know like it kind of flips the switch we have five seconds left 
for people who are worried about commitment, you know, um, if you can hang in there, it's, it becomes the most freeing, liberating, inspiring thing you can do. We can do this in two parts. So I'm just going to finish this now.